They're big, fast, and equipped with a painful sting. Hello everyone, this is Siddharth from Ants India presenting you my first ever ant profile. Today's profile is going to be on the little critters known scientifically as Tetrapanera rufo nigra. I hope you enjoy and consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel for more ant goodness. Ever since I was little, I used to be fascinated by these giant red and black ants that darted around. It seemed like they were everywhere. From houses, to trees, to the ground, everywhere I looked, I could see these gigantic red ants called Lal Dongre in Marathi, which literally translates to giant red ants. Only when I got into ant keeping hobby did I really try to dig and identify these ants, and they turned out to be none other than Tetrapanera rufo nigra. These ants are found in several tropical countries and subtropical areas of the world, including but not limited to. India, Bangladesh, Bhutan, Cambodia, Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore, China, and Vietnam. <laughs> Here is a map showing the distribution of the genus Tetrapanera across the world. The workers of the species are long, slender, and narrow, measuring about 10 to 12 millimeters in length, with a black head and abdomen, with a dark orangish red thorax area and short legs. The queens look similar to the workers, apart from the fact that they are larger, approximately 13 to 15 millimeters in length, and have a larger gaster region as compared to the worker ants. The nuptial flights occur near the end of the cold season, with the new queens forming independent colonies. Sometimes, a colony might accept a second or even a third queen, but this is a rare occurrence. These ants are voracious foragers and aggressive predators. They are armed with a painful sting akin to that of a wasp, which leaves the behind red swelling for several hours. As such, it is necessary to treat these ants with the respect that they deserve. Yet, when I see ants of this species in my yard, they seem more skittish than aggressive, preferring to skid away to safety or stand like a statue to stinging. Yet, having personally experienced stings from these critters, I wouldn't recommend getting too fresh with them. Quick ant story. I've actually been stung by these ants twice in my life. The first time when I was resting next to a tree during PT, chatting with a friend when suddenly I felt a sharp pain in my neck. I realized that I had been stung. And oh boy was it painful and itchy. The sting site radiated pain in savage waves for a good 10 to 15 minutes which left me slightly lightheaded and sporting a red bump on my neck that itched for a good while afterwards. The second time, one of these ants actually got into my shirt as I was playing the keyboard. I had no idea how it got there, but it sure did sting me pretty badly. Yet this time the sting wasn't as bad. These ants, though aggressive, make great pets as they are easy to care for and adapt well to an artificial setup. In the wild, they make their nests in wood or bamboo often also being seen in termite mounds. These ants use the dirt and their own saliva to create a sort of paste that they use to seal the nest entrance such that it's just wide enough for a single worker to fit through. This is a must if you want to keep these ants. So I suggest adding a spoonful of sterilized that is either boiled or baked dirt to their artificial nests. These ants are low maintenance and accept a wide array of foods but it's necessary to feed them the basics, which is honey or sugar for energy, insects for protein, and fruit as an added source of nutrition. As with all ants, it's important to experiment with the food, as ants can be very picky eaters. Make sure to give them a wide array of foodstuffs and experiment to see what your ants like best. As I said before, these ants have the nuptial flights, which are large flights where ants breed to start new colonies, right at the end of the cold season. Once you catch a queen, it's a must that you have them put into a test tube setup, which I've shown how to make in your last video, and leave them in the dark, quiet place and check on them every one to two weeks until their first workers arrive. And the first workers are called nanitics. I've never had the pleasure of owning one of these colonies, but I'm definitely planning on catching a few queens this anting season. Maybe I'll even try combining multiple queens to form a super colony. That'll be an interesting series of videos. Thank you all for watching this ant profile. I hope you enjoyed and learned some things on the way. If you did, make sure to like and click the channel icon on screen right now to subscribe for more videos. It really helps the channel out. Also, tell me in the comments below which genus or species I should make an ant profile on next. Thank you, for, thank you all for watching. 
This is Siddharth from Mans India signing out. Goodbye.